This is Philip Winston. I'm going to talk about some work I've been doing on the Napari project. It's a multi-dimensional image viewer for Python. So it's used as part of the SciPy ecosystem uh, to uh, view and analyze and annotate uh, scientific imagery, usually biology or neuroscience right now. So it has features like this multi-scale image viewing for very large images, multi-dimensional image viewing for uh, time series or different modalities, 2D and 3D rendering, uh, labeling, the multiple layers. This is also multi-scale, I think. Um, and this is another labeling example. So labeling means giving unique colors to, or pseudo unique colors to uh, different segments like that. So when I started on Napari, I was told my uh, priority was going to be um, rendering. And so currently Napari works great if the data is in memory, but if it um, has to be computed, if it takes time, if it's over the internet, um, the UI uh, usually will block today. So this is a syn synthetic case. It's got 16 layers and 25 slices. And so I can toggle the visibility of the layers over here. And each layer in this case, just for my testing purposes, just has a single digit. The digit is the slice number. So let me click in the lower right to go to the next slice. On my end, I actually get the, um, the Mac uh, spinning ball of death indicating that the, the, the app is not responsive. It doesn't record on the video, but um, but you can see it takes about four seconds to change slices, which doesn't seem like the end of the world, but when you use the slider, it becomes really apparent how slow that is. So um, I'm holding the slider. I haven't let go, and it's gone from slice 4 to 13 and uh, 21. And you can see if you were, you know, if you're busy working on a paper, trying to analyze your data like this, it's pretty much not usable. And if you did have to use it, you'd be very frustrated. So um, so we have a, a proposed solution that's working uh, fairly well. Uh, the next step is getting it merged and getting it used wider and, and writing tests. And there's a fair amount left to do. So this is asynchronous. You can see I happen to be missing one, um, one layer, which is a bug. But the nice thing now, when I switch layers, uh, one, since I'm, I'm running in, uh, I have six worker threads, so I'm running some of these loads in parallel. Um, I don't know if I said in the beginning, but each load in this data set is synthetically set to 250 milliseconds. So that's where the, the four seconds comes from. So now I'm doing some of those 260 millise 250 millisecond loads in parallel. And... So it's, it's much faster, but also I get to see the results as they're loaded. And if I use the slider, I can see the benefits here that um, one, it's faster, but two, it's totally interruptible. So if I don't like what's loading in, I can just switch around and it's, you can imagine with real data, this is much better experience. So how did we, well, first of all, let me, let me show my, uh, my uh, subjective, uh, a relationship here. This comes from many years of uh, doing interactive graphics and you know for video games gamers will argue they need higher than 60 Hertz uh, for sort of competitive reasons but if you're not trying to uh, shoot anyone uh, 60 Hertz is pretty much perfect like you're, you're gonna be very very happy and I also argue that 30 Hertz is not much worse but as we get down things start to get worse rapidly. And I put this crossover point at about 10 hertz. So that's kind of where we go from, eh, it's okay, to, ugh, it's not good. And and then importantly, it just gets keep getting worse. So uh, the four second case is up here somewhere. And if you had 10 seconds, it would just be, it just keeps getting worse and worse. So how do we, how did we develop this? How do we debug it? How do we understand what's going on? with interactive 3D rendering, everything's happening so quickly. Uh, ideally, a frame is taking you know just some number of milliseconds. It, it can be hard to, to even understand what's going on. So 
we're using a tool that Chrome has built in called Chrome Tracing, and it's used to record all sorts of timing and profiling information if you're debugging your web app, but it takes a JSON file and they document the format. So we set up Napari, so now, and this is already merged, you can run, uh, you can produce these traces when you run Napari if you're debugging. So here's a trace of how things were before any changes. And this is a single button press and it's taking 4.3 seconds because it's doing uh, loading each of these 250 millisecond layers one after another, 16 of them. And so this is the problem. The problem is the GUI thread is blocked. It can do nothing else for those uh, four seconds. So this is the problem and this is the solution. Um, it's more complicated, but it works a lot better. So in this case, I have six worker threads. We can obviously configure the number of threads. And the 16 loads get distributed over these six threads. And you can see things come in in three batches here. So the first three, let's see how long. They should be about 250, 260. Um, so each of these loads happens in parallel. And then they all get drawn here. This is a lot of activity related to drawing those six. And then you get six more, they get drawn, and then four, they get drawn. And the other thing we can see here is in these segments, we're just sliding through the slices at about, this is 24 milliseconds, this is 19, so you know, maybe 20 hertz or something. So this is, uh, this is the, 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 the solved case where you're able to, to move the slider around. So that was a synthetic example. Let's look at a, a real world example. This is something that was given to me as an initial sort of driving problem. And in the synthetic example, we were, we were delaying by 250 milliseconds. In this real example, uh, two of the layers are in memory. So they're instant, but one of the layers is computed by torch. Uh, the, the, it's some kind of handwriting recognition problem. And so Torch is doing a computation and the, the upper right and lower left are in memory. The upper left is um, computed. And this is the old way. So this is pre-async. And when I click it, you know, it takes half a second. Um, it doesn't seem that bad. But again, when I use the slider, uh, that's where it really suffers, and it's not four seconds, so it's not that bad, but um, at the bottom you see there's actually 10,000 slices here, and so sometimes it's jumping around by 1,000 slices, and it's definitely not uh, very good. And so now we'll look at the, the async version, and in this case we're using asynchronous processes instead of threads, that's still something we're investigating. Uh, in this case, it needed the processes, but we're trying to figure that out. Um, so one thing about the processes is it does take longer to start up. So there's actually Napari starting up, and now it's starting up the six worker processes. So the two memory um, layers are in memory, and then this is where the, the worker um, processes is going to come into play. So now when I switch slices, single step, um, it didn't seem that slow before, but now you see the difference because the, the two are instant and the other one comes up a little bit later. So that's already an improvement, but then if I just kind of click clicking it, you can see it it works. And, um, and if I grab the slider, this is the, the big difference. This is really the payoff. So now I can slide it all around. It doesn't quite keep up perfectly but it's at least 20 hertz maybe 30 hertz and when I stop it even if I just pause it shows me what I want so it just feels free and fluid and a lot nicer so let's look at the trace for that um, this was the old way and there's no longer 16 loads there's just one big computation and it's 400 milliseconds. And then we look at the after case. So that's the problem. You see the, the GUI thread is blocked for that whole time. This is the after case. This is just one load here. So totally different. 
the load in this case was 446 milliseconds, but you see the entire, t almost the entire time it was loaded, um, nothing was going on. And then at the end, you see this little flurry of activity. That's where it's drawing what was loaded. Um, and one last thing, as you can see, this is uh, when we were just scrolling through. And again, we, we set it up so no loads happen unless you pause. And so these are drawing the, this is uh, drawing the uh, two in-memory layers and requesting, but the request never happens because we're just sliding through. But this is the, this is the, the payoff because it, it, these, um, these events are probably again like 20 or 30 hertz, let's see, um, 28 milliseconds, that'd be 30 hertz, but this is other little event there, so maybe 20 hertz. And that's it, so it really seems to, to help. We gotta get it finished, we gotta get it uh, fully debugged, and and eventually we're gonna move on to other, uh, other layer types. But this is uh, Napari, and I'm Philip Winston, and thank you for listening.